In 2001, America suffers a great loss, and our country's focus turns towards our veterans. In 2003, the Chicago Lighthouse contracts with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs to supply adaptive technology. Since its inception, over 30,000 visually disabled veterans have been helped by the program. It's the middle of August. It's Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock. It means it's time for the beacon. Here we are. Bill Jurek here. Lainey Williams here. Nice to have you with us. With the introduction of Chris Radio, Bill Jurek broadcasts The Beacon, a nationally syndicated weekly radio program advocating and discussing issues for people who are blind and visually disabled, the only one of its kind. I think just being part of the, of the Lighthouse team, we've been very fortunate to uh, be blessed with strong management, strong board. Uh, we've expanded a number of programs, including our services to, to children, um, the employment programs, also the uh, Chris Radio. I think the changes that I've seen, the change in focus, have been on trying to expand our services, particularly in this area, the Chicago land community uh, and employment, but also increasing use of technology. And I think that's where the future is, uh, using technology to help people in our, for example, our adaptive services uh, programs, uh, technology in terms of helping people keep jobs, um, use computers, uh, that, that I think is a big part of our future. This is Senator Barack Obama, and I just want to wish Chicago Lighthouse a happy 100th anniversary and congratulate you for all the wonderful work that you do day in, day out. You're the Chicago Lighthouse celebrates its 100th anniversary tonight. Our own Warner Saunders emceed the dinner and reception. The Low Vision Clinic, now 50 years old, expands to five satellite offices. To date, the Low Vision Clinic has served tens of thousands of Low Vision clients. The role of college guidance and support takes precedent. Marv Later and Dr. Joel Kaplan tirelessly campaign for student scholarships and bright futures. Over $900,000 in scholarships have been raised by this program. As the Chicago Lighthouse grows into a world-class organization, they take on their most ambitious fundraising endeavor in the Bold Visions campaign, spearheaded by former board chairs Dr. Joel Kaplan and Frank Channon. In only two years, the campaign raises $17 million for the agency's new expansion. About 2004, the uh, director of development then said, look, we're going to come in the next two years to the 100th anniversary of the Lighthouse, and we've got to do something appropriate to celebrate it, but also it's a great opportunity for fundraising. And he recommended that we start a campaign to honor her uh, century of existence. I thought it was a good idea. I was on the development committee at the time. And little did I know that they were going to ask me to co-chair the campaign. <laughs> I had never done uh, serious fundraising, and uh, we were able to achieve our goal, and that permitted us some expansion of the physical lighthouse and some uh, support of some new programs. With a new executive director at the helm in Dr. Janet Slick, working along with a new chair of the board, bank CEO Bill Conaghan, the Chicago Lighthouse knows no boundaries. In 2010, the continuous growth and community impact of the agency was evident. Impressively, from 2000 to 2010, the Lighthouse increased its client service record from 6,000 to over 70,000 clients per year. With the Bold Visions campaign renovations complete, the agency was poised to make an even greater impact. New amenities included the Lighthouse store and multiple Lighthouse customer service call centers. The new Low Vision Clinic is leading edge and has a new name, the Sandy and Rick Forsyth Comprehensive Vision Care Center.
The Pangier Center for Inherited Retinal Diseases opens with world-renowned ophthalmologist and researcher Dr. Gerald Fishman as director. We are so proud of this lighthouse and of Dr. Fishman. We have brought several individuals, several groups here to see what it's all about because they, people don't know. They're not aware of what's available to them. So we will continue to show off this place because like I said, it's, it's a gem. In 2012, the Chicago Lighthouse reaches out to the northern suburbs, opening Lighthouse North in Glenview, Illinois, thanks to the North Suburban Healthcare Foundation. Continuing with its theme of integration and diversity, in 2013, the Chicago Lighthouse expands its preschool by integrating children that are both visually impaired and sighted in the Judy and Ray McCaskey Preschool. And every spring, the community comes together to celebrate the Chicago Lighthouse's achievements with their annual Seeing What's Possible dinner. They are a true beacon of light. They're so incredible. When someone comes to the Lighthouse for the Blind, as I have had a friend of mine come, he was hopeless, quite frankly, and he thought that it was the end of his life. Then he came to the Lighthouse for the Blind and he was helped so incredibly that now he's like a different person. By 2013, the Chicago Lighthouse is poised for bigger things. A Midwest beacon for decades, a leader in blind and visually disabled programming the world over, their time has come. With its audacious board of directors, headed by board chair bank president Bruce Haig, the Chicago Lighthouse negotiates the largest contract in their history. Partnering with UIC and the Illinois Tollway, it opens an impressive customer service call center while employing over 400 blind, visually impaired, disabled, and veterans. This leads to additional customer service centers with University of Illinois Health in 2014 and continued exponential growth for years to come. The employment opportunities that the Lighthouse now offers that haven't been offered in the past is, I think, the most significant single thing that has happened in the last two or three years, and I hope it continues to grow. With the biggest change, of course, has been the growth of the call centers where we have provided services that have been superb from their standpoint and superb from our standpoint. Over the last decade, the Lighthouse also becomes a leader in the assistive technology field, penning studies on the Brainport and partnering with eSight Technology. But I think it's marvelous that there is a place where people with varying degrees of vision loss can come, but it's filled with activities which stimulate their fine minds, their lifetime interests, and it makes for a full and happy life under the circumstances. And the Lighthouse is that beacon of advantage for anyone with visual impairment. And recently, the Cook County Board of Commissioners presented a proclamation honoring the Chicago Lighthouse on its 110th anniversary. This was made possible by our longtime board member, Cook County Commissioner, Richard Boykin. The legacy of the Chicago Lighthouse it's truly something to marvel at, from the very young to the slightly older. The Chicago Lighthouse is truly a community of care.